Good morning. I want to talk to you this morning about what Jesus had to say about racial clashes, racial tension, as it relates to the consummation of all things, or as he said it, the end of the age. We are living in the days of disunity. The rifts that have been somewhat limited to the highest rungs of our societal structure well, they're now down to the familial level. Families and households are divided over things they see and hear on their phones and TV screens. The most inflamed of those rifts right now is being presented to us via unending media coverage. It's the racial clash that has always been present but seems to rise and fall with each new incident. As a pastor, my primary concern is for the church. And part of my calling is to influence not only how the church reacts when they absorb these events through their TV screen or in person, but also my calling is to influence how they respond once they've had some time to absorb and process the things that we're seeing unfold in our nation and around the world. It's my opinion that the most crucial starting point for any follower of Jesus to begin processing what's happening in our world is to understand that Jesus foretold racial clashes that would continue to build as time marches on toward the consummation of all things. Let me show you the context of where he said this and when he said this and why he said this. And then I'll explain why it even matters, especially for you as a Christ follower. First, there are three places where Jesus talked about the consummation of all things, the end of the age. Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21. Three of the gospel writers wrote in detail recorded the true historical account of where Jesus gave what's called the Olivet Discourse, where he explained the signs of the times or the things that would build and grow in intensity and frequency as the time of his return drew near and the consummation of all earthly events began to come to pass. He described them as um, similar to the way birth pangs come upon a woman who's in labor. They start small, the pains that she experiences of labor. They start small, and then they grow in frequency and intensity until the time of the birth has arrived. Well, one of those signs of the consummation of all things, Jesus said, and nation will rise against nation. Now, that's our English translation. That's not what it says in the Greek. In the Greek, I'm going to put this on your screen because it's, it's extremely critical that everybody knows what he's talking about here. The whole world needs to know this. The word that Jesus used, he said, ethnos will rise against ethnos. What do you hear there? Ethnic group. The word actually means race. You can see it. If you look it up in a lexicon or I have a, a Greek New Testament and a Hebrew, Old Testament, and you can see that right there. He said, racial group, people group, ethnos, will rise against ethnos. So what Jesus is saying is that there will be continuous clashes between tribal groups or racial groups. You have to understand that when the Bible talks about nations, it's not talking about a land, a piece of land. It's talking primarily about people groups, tribal groups that make up one familial unit as God sees it, a family group, a tribal group, a culture. It can be dispersed like the Jews were dispersed all over the world, but God still saw them and called them a nation, a tribe, didn't matter where they were living. Jesus is saying that as the time draws near, there will be continuous clashes one racial group, one tribe rising up against another tribe. So why does any of this matter? And why am I saying this is the starting point for all of his followers to understand how we're supposed to react and how we're supposed to respond? Well, I think it's pretty simple. If you look in Mark 13 at where Jesus said these things, that um, 
nation would rise against nation. There'd be wars and rumors of wars and on and on the list goes. He tells us two different ways that we're supposed to react. I'm going to put that on your screen also. In the verse just prior to where he said uh, ethnic group would rise against ethnic group, he says this. He says, don't be alarmed when you see these things happening. Don't be alarmed. That's the first thing that Christians need to understand. The knowledge that Jesus foretold that we would see racial wars, just like there was in his day, but that it would build as time marched on. That knowledge, knowing he foretold that, ought to keep us from becoming alarmed in our hearts and in our mind. We should say to ourselves, Jesus foretold it, which means God in his sovereign plan for humanity has decreed that these things come to pass. So part of God's plan for the consummation of all things is to allow the world to have what they want, namely a planet without the influence of God. And he turns them over to their own evil ways. Part of that turning over, surrendering mankind to their own evil ways means constant conflict, constant adversity, constant friction between ethnic groups. This is what the world wants when they say, look, we don't need God interfering in our affairs. We can handle things on our own. It's the way he's always done it. And eventually, he will entirely turn us over. Jesus foretold that race wars, constant conflicts between ethnic groups, would be a key component of the global narrative as the world marched toward the consummation of all things. The second thing that this knowledge that Christians have, that Jesus foretold that race wars would be a, a key component of the global narrative as we march toward the consummation of all things, is that it should keep us alert. Okay, It says that right in the, the verse that follows. It should keep us alert, on our guard. Now, this is not just a generic, oh, stay alert. No, this is a, a specific command that we're to be alert about a specific thing. As the world begins to crave unity and harmony without God, just as they did at the Tower of Babel, and God saw that they were coming together apart from him, and he himself broke up that harmony and unity, as we see a world craving a unity without God and a one world government coming into our line of sight and we see the world calling for one global leader, that this will eventually happen and the whole world will come together under the vanity of peace on earth. The world is craving a utopia that Jesus says will not happen until the Prince of Peace comes and establishes it himself. But the world wants it without the Prince of Peace. As that utopia becomes the chief craving of the citizens of this world, do you know what one community will stand in the way of that unified global government? It's Christians. And we will be looked at as the primary hate group. True Bible-believing Christians. The group that stands in opposition of what the world says will be peace on earth. True Bible-believing Christians will say, we will not unify under a banner that is in opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the world will reject us, and they will begin to persecute us. They will see us as the primary target to eliminate because we stand in the way of what they have perceived as a utopia. So what then? Because Jesus foretold that racial clashes would be a key component of the global narrative as the consummation of all things drew near, how should Christians respond? Should we, we be apathetic as we see these events unfold? Should we say, ah, Jesus said they would happen, so why should we care? Well, as the Apostle Paul said, may it never be. True followers of Jesus will never be apathetic to injustice. And if that's your disposition, then let me warn you, you are not following Jesus. You are not being conformed to his heart or to his mind. Remember, Jesus said, you will always have the poor among you. Does that mean we turn a blind eye when we see the poor among us? 
Certainly not. It's the call of those who follow Jesus to treat the poor among us and those who are oppressed as he treated them. But here's the difference. The motive of Christ followers will be different. The reason why we stand up for injustice and the chief aim of our taking a stand against injustice will be different than the rest of the world. Our chief aim is not harmony for the sake of harmony. We do not believe that a utopia is possible on the earth until the Prince of Peace comes himself and establishes it. So what is our goal? Our goal is the gospel. Our goal is to stand against injustice and to fight for peace and against oppression so that people will turn their focus to the salvation that's offered by the Prince of Peace. Our goal is to help people get on the Ark of Salvation. That's the only reason we fight against injustice. It's so that people will turn their eyes to the Savior, the only one who can do something about it. And so, I encourage all followers of Jesus to go and stand at the abortion mills where injustice is happening at an astronomical rate. I encourage Christians to take a stand and use your voice to fight against injustice and racial uh, disunity in the church. And oh, is it ever present. I encourage other pastors to invite people of a different race to preach from your pulpit from time to time. I encourage ministry leaders to go out and do ministry among the people who look different than you. But the end goal of all of it is that people would hear the gospel and that their souls would be saved from a sinking ship that is our planet and put their trust in Jesus Christ and His coming utopia, His coming kingdom. We pray about that with you now as we begin our day. Father, Jesus assured us that the world would grow further and further away from your heart. That fear, hatred, disunity, and a lack of trust would begin to settle in as the, as the norm on our planet. Not only at the top rungs of our societal structure, but down into the very households that make up our world. Help us not to attach our hearts to this world, but to recognize that what Jesus said would come to pass for this planet is coming to pass right before our eyes, and to attach our heartstrings to His coming perfect world that He's promised to us. As Christ followers, living in these confusing days, help us to fix our eyes on the One who foretold everything that we're seeing come to pass right before our eyes and to allow his word to influence us. Our thoughts and our minds must be grounded in what Jesus said about these events. Only by the Spirit can this happen. So I pray that your church would be filled with the Spirit in these last days until he comes to take us home. In the name of the King of kings and Lord of lords, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Keep reading the Word. Have a wonderful day.